Hey there, welcome back and thank you for watching. If you are looking for hydraulic fluid lab testing, this is the place. We are sending all five of these brands, including the big boy Amsoil, off for Blackstone lab testing so we can find out what's inside of these as far as additives packages and contents and viscosities of these oils and see what you're getting for your dollar. So stick around. Okay, so if you're a subscriber to the channel, you know what's coming uh, and you know what we've done. So let's recap. What have we done? Uh, we've done a video on the hydraulic fluid spec comparisons of major brands, all of these uh, plus other ones, except for Lucas. I'll add that into the table. Uh, we've also done a prior video with Blackstone lab test results, showing the actual contents, additive package, and that sort of thing of four other brands. And now we're going to add five more to that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the methodology here. So all five of these containers are brand new unopened uh, bottles. So we're going to shake them up and I'll put a little video up in the corner here so you can see this happening for each of the brands. We're going to shake them up and we're going to pour a sample into the Blackstone container and send them off for lab analysis. Then we're going to take another sample, put it in my bottles and put them in the freezer. And unfortunately I can only do four at a time. So I'm going to have to do a lone sample, but I'll you know line them up side by side here. And we're going to do a cold viscosity pour test uh, to see which uh, is the best. And then we'll compare that to the prior four uh, samples that we did in the uh, previous video. So the reason we're shaking these up is it's just really based on the project farm methodology of if there's additives in this container and if some of them have settled and are not distributed evenly, you want to make sure that's uh, done uh, before you send them off for testing. Now, one of the items we'll be looking at in the lab testing as well is the total acid number. Uh, and the thought there is that you test the virgin oil and then you could test the used sample and sort of get a, a feel for whether that number has risen over time, the oil has become more acidic over time. Uh, now, I've already done this and I'll put a link here to the prior video and it'll be in the description too for the Permatran and my Massey. Uh, and what I discovered is that the tan number apparently can vary quite a bit uh, just on you know, bottle to bottle. Uh, so, so that's the one thing I discovered. The other thing I discovered is that after about a year of use, 15 months, uh, very low hours, 30 some hours, I believe, uh, I really didn't see uh, the need to change the oil. So it does say in the Massey manual to change at a certain number of hours or annually. Uh, but I wasn't seeing increased moisture and I wasn't seeing an increased acid number. Uh, so that just didn't justify changing it that frequently. So anyway, so that's kind of the methodology behind doing the virgin oil here. And then you get this. And then if you want to go off and test your own oil, you'll have the virgin samples here to compare a virgin sample to your used oil. And it'll save you that step. You just got to be aware that bottle to bottle, there is some variation even with the uh, major manufacturers here. All right, here we have the old video lined up uh, with the new, uh, splicing them together, and here comes the test. And uh, you can see as the results uh, go here, Kubota UDT2 is the clear winner by a mile. Uh, Amsoil uh, came in a close, uh, sort of, second, I guess. Uh, and then Lucas and uh, Traveler actually did uh, really well uh, in this test, uh, too. So there's your results on the cold pour test. All right, so let's start digging into, you know, what to look for and why we're doing this. So one of the reasons we're doing this is that, you know, buying an off-brand uh, tractor fluid is not uh, a slam dunk. And I'll give you an example. You know, people will say, you know, Kubota doesn't make their own oil. John Deere doesn't make their own oil. Well, guess what? Napa doesn't either. And here's an example uh, where Napa... Uh, outsources to Warren Oil, and there's a $10 million class action settlement uh, where uh, what it turned out, and it included uh, several fluids plus their uh, tractor hydraulic fluid. Uh, they were out of spec, did not meet required specifications. Uh, and that's not even necessarily manufacturer specifications, it's the required specifications that Napa put on Warren uh, for the product, I suppose. Uh, so you got to be careful, you know, buying these third party products. I think, you know, variation in quality, batch to batch, and just trustworthiness of, of the brand is, is an issue. All right, so what do I look for in a tractor hydraulic fluid? Well, here you go. 
Um, well, first of all, what you don't look for, this CAM2 or ISO 324668, that's the wrong product, right? You're looking for something that says tractor hydraulic fluid, THF, or universal tractor transmission fluid. Sometimes they will use the word oil. They should be saying fluid because it's like a blend, I guess. Uh, so here I'm just kind of thumbing through some pages, uh, showing you some of the possibilities. You know, like here's the Napa we were talking about. You know, there's a tractor fluid and then there's also a Valvoline 68. Uh, Fram makes it. There's so many brands of tractor fluid. Uh, this Agra uh, UTTO uh, seems to be actually be a good brand uh, as well. And then next up is a question of, you know, specs. Yes, every manufacturer has their own spec and marketing sheets will claim to meet those specs, but they are, of course, manufacturers' uh, claims, not necessarily some third-party independent uh, verification uh, of, of the claim. However, most of these manufacturers do test to ISO or ASTM standards. Uh, so if they're testing to common standards and they publish their specs, that is an indication, in my opinion, of high-quality products. Or reliability in your product uh, so look up the spec sheets for these products don't just look on the back of the bottle and say hey it meets mf 1145 or jd 20 c look up the actual specs and try to compare it what's you know compared to what's required uh, by your manufacturer and make your determination that way and then before we get to the lab results let's just look at the spec sheets here uh, so here are the side-by-side -side comparisons of all nine brands that I tested. I added Shell Rotella in there uh, just from previous research. I really wanted to lab test that, but I didn't. So I kept it in there. Uh, and then I've also got pricing for each of these because that's a factor too. You know, are you really saving anything? And I know that's not the you know deciding factor for some people. For some people, it's, well, you know, my dealer is X number of hours away. So I, you know, I need an alternate you know, brand. But pricing's here just, you know, as a data point. But these are the, uh, I guess, common you know spec categories. Walmart, Supertech, no clue what their specs are, right? Uh, Lucas is a little light in their specs. Traveler is not uh, well published. So really, I think the takeaway here is, you know, all of these fluids seem to be pretty darn similar, but some of them have questionable uh, information that's available uh, or in some cases, just complete lack of information. So that's a factor that needs to be considered, I think, when you're you know, trying to determine which oil or fluid uh, you're going to use for your tractor. So just keep all that in mind, and hopefully this is a good reference table for you. All right, now the table you've all been waiting for. This is the lab results uh, comparison side by side. I will include the source files from Blackstone at the end of this video, so you can make sure I'm not doing some switcheroo on you. Um, and then also just to note, I've kept the left to right ordering the same here. So hopefully it's maybe easier for you to sort of line it up and, you know, see the, the results. Um, so there's a question of voiding warranty. Uh, people will say, well, you know, don't use such and such brand that's going to void your warranty. Boy, I'd love to see a situation where someone has used, let's say, uh, UDT2, uh, instead of Permatran or vice versa or Traveler instead of Permatran or Lucas instead of John Deere. And the dealer has said, hey, wrong fluid, vo uh, your warranty claims void uh, because we've determined it's a fluid issue. If you have a situation like that, please post it in the comments. Based on these results here, I don't see enough variation to where that could actually be proven. But may maybe I'm wrong, right? I this is not my, uh, you know, I'm not an expert in this. But let's talk about some of the categories. Uh, so first up here, uh, the cold pour. The cold pour test, Kubota UDT2 was the clear winner. And by the way, the angle on that little uh, rig that I made was like identical for all the tests, even though I did them se three separate tests. Uh, so this is as apples to apples as I could get in the testing. And Kubota just came out ahead. Uh, Amsoil, did, Amsoil did pretty good too. Uh, on the flip side though, Walmart SuperTech, not so good. Actually, Mobile Delvac actually wasn't that good either. Uh, so then let's look at um, additives. So back to Kubota UDT2, very low in the phosphorus and zinc compared to all the other brands, except maybe Lucas is kind of low as well. Uh, so they're anti-wear uh, and, and uh, friction additives. So I'm not really sure why that is in the Kubota formula, uh, why it's so low, or I just got a bad batch or what the deal was, but... These are the results, you know, from Blackstone. Take them for, you know, what you see here. 
Uh, so then the other one was tan. So I paid extra for this total acid number test. And, you know, I'm not really sure it was worth it, to be honest with you. Uh, so look at the Permatran. Like I tested one bottle of Permatran, the Virgin, come back as, as a 3.7. And then was a completely separate bottle that was used uh, in this 33 hours of use test. And that came back less acidic. So that means that particular bottle started at least one point less acidic uh, than what I thought the baseline would be, which is 3.7. So if you say there's like a plus or minus one you know, variation here, these are all pretty close. Uh, UDT tubes really, you know, low. Um, but again, the used Permatram was. So I don't know if I'd test that again, but that's, you know, I think a good number basically just to confirm that you don't have an acidic oil, uh, you know, product to start with. Okay, so then we've got these um, contaminants. So check out the contaminants. So there was silicon in some of the Permatran and uh, Mobile Delvac uh, samples, a little higher than I guess I would have expected. Uh, so that was a little weird. Um, and then in the Lucas, and you'll see in the comments later here, uh, the Lucas had a trace of insolubles, which they said could have just been that I didn't shake it up enough. I think I shook it pretty good. Uh, but that's, you know, take it for what it's worth there, you know, on the, the Lucas as far as the insolubles. Uh, but generally speaking, like there's not really, you know, contaminants in this stuff. You know, these are pretty clean samples. There weren't wear metals or anything like that either. All right, so then the other thing, check this out. So there's this additive, and I'm going to say this wrong, molybdenum. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make fun of me in the comments for that. But Permatran, for example, the virgin sample was zero. The used sample was one. So what's up with that? Um, I guess one part per million is maybe a hard uh, thing to measure. Uh, or again, maybe there's just some slight variation, but it was, also, it was just very, very low in uh, all of these samples, really, except maybe the AMS oil come up as a two, but that still seems like a very low number. Uh, so I'm not sure that that's, I, I was thinking that might be a, a differentiator for some of these uh, brands, but it just wasn't. Uh, Boron did seem to be sort of a differentiator. Uh, we saw high levels in uh, Permatran and Mobile Delvac, uh, and also, uh, well, the use sample too, but then lower in, in some of the other ones. But like calcium for the detergent, um, Phosphor sink, you know, they were, you know, there were a lot of similarities between the various uh, brands for, for these uh, categories of additives. Okay, we're back inside because it's very wet outside. Uh, this video has been well over a month in the making uh, and a huge expense for my channel. Uh, I've got a small channel here, so hit the like button if, if this video has been helpful uh, to you. I'd appreciate that. Uh, so what I've done here, I think I've given you data. You can go make your own decision. It's your tractor. It's your money. It's your warranty. It's your deal. So go take this and make your own decision. Uh, I don't see a major difference between these fluids, but maybe I'm wrong. I know the base oils. Obviously, I have completely ignored the percentage mix of base oils that are within each of these products. But, you know, if they're tested to an ASTM standard, does the base oil matter so much? I don't know, right? Um, I wish I did. I wish I, you know, I wish I knew more about fluids to be able to make that assessment. But that's why I'm putting this video out there. There's got to be someone out there who does this, who can maybe comment on that uh, piece of the puzzle. All right, so I'll paste into the end of this video the the um, actual results for each of the fluids, even from the round one testing, and you can just kind of pause and take a look. Uh, so as always, thank you for watching. Take care and catch you next time.